everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Aaron Cavley, and I'm going to do a, a review of a, another role-playing game product. This time it's going to be the Hostile Setting Book by Zozer Games. It is a setting book for what's called the Cepheus Engine uh, rule system, and for those who don't know what the Cepheus Engine is, it's basically the system resource document for the old Traveler, or the original sci-fi 2d6 space role-playing game that was released uh, some years ago and it was taken in uh, sort of finished up and then released as as a uh, you know as a cleaned up document uh, called Cepheus Engine and a lot of independent game designers are using it basically to make a, a excellent content sci-fi content because the 2.6 rules they're simple and they're versatile you can do pretty much anything with them they've they've got uh, magic systems out magic games with it out sword and sorcery games westerns all sorts of uh, sci-fi settings covering different times and different tech levels and and such as that hostile is a setting whose theme is the industrial, that kind of hard, gritty industrial sci-fi from the 80s and 90s. We're talking like Outland and Aliens, Blade Runner, where things are kind of grim, um, and just that 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 theme behind it. Uh, in order to to keep the theme, the author Paul Elliott of, of Zozer Games. Uh, it concedes that some some of the setting issues, like what kind of resources would actually be available, and if the corporations, you know, and the missions would match exactly, especially like for the recovery of uh, raw minerals. Uh, but it is really kind of a, a minor, you know, a minor point, and, and you can it's something that's easily changeable in the background. But the, the setting itself is extremely well written to follow that theme. The details um, and, and the history for run, running hostile. There's a lot of stuff in the book we're going to go over. They just released a, uh, they being Paul, I guess, <laughs> Ed Zozer, just released a revised version. And it's uh, along with a hardback. And I just got the hardback the other day. I've kind of been waiting for the review on it because I, I've played a campaign or two using Hostile. I just I, I really love it as a game because the, the sci-fi games. I never played a lot of your classic Traveler growing up, but I was very big into the 2300 Traveler 2300, which is very much a you know it was an 80s vision of the near future that had hard hard sci-fi elements um hostile itself is pretty well it, it's hard sci-fi it has the two hand waviums of you know the of the the jump drive which works a little different than classic traveler and it has gravity plates so that you can have gravity um in the settings uh when i first started playing it i didn't i didn't like i'm not really a you know Crafting manipulation guy. I like more tech level nine. I like to. I just like the uh, the aesthetic of the the spinning, you know, the the rotating uh, pseudo gravity, uh, that that kind of stuff. Uh, more near future. What we can kind of see. Um, and in fact, that's how I started playing Hostile. But Paul has so much so much material out for it i just decided to, to stop fighting it because if you just have one or two things it's easy to to, to come up and, and and get more of a uh, uh leviathan wakes the uh, you know with the the decks built to use the gravity of thrust but he just he just came out with so much content and i was like mm. what got me onto hostile actually was he has a another game uh, called Orbital, and that one is like exclusively hard sci-fi. You know, there's no gravity. All the engines are, I guess, in traveler terms, Tech Eight, Tech Nine, 
uh, you know, things that we can, you know, maybe we're just a hop, skip, and a jump from today, but, you know, it has the rotational gravity, you know, the, the spin habitats, and it has the, uh, the reaction mass, and, and Hostile has that stuff too, it just, it has the jump and it has the, the plates. Everything else is kind of a, you know, the, the gritty near future setting. I'll, I'll go into more detail about the setting and the things that I really like about it and just kind of go over what, what's in the book. First, I'll, I'm going to come over here and show you the hardback real quick j just because it, it's, really a, it's really a beautiful, uh, beautiful book. Right, so there it is, Hostile. The book itself is uh, produced by Lulu.com. I don't think you can, you can't get the hardback from Drive Through RPG, which is where you can get all, all the uh, PDFs for everything. Dang cat hair, pardon me. But it's well made. You can see the the binding. There's a that's that's an awesome that's an awesome piece of work. It's one of the other things too I do like. I like the aesthetic of the of the ships because they're you know they 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 look they look more realistic I guess than uh, or it's the type of style I like anyway. There's some other uh, excellent art. Uh, Ian Stead did the uh, a lot of the internal art and the cover. Uh, he does a lot of work for people over on the uh, Cepheus group, as far as I can tell. But that's that's really good. I don't generally speaking, I don't like the too much of the CGI people look. They just they they look off, even if they're you know really done well. But the artwork in, in this book is just, it's beautiful. Paul had mentioned, uh, Paul was involved in the, he would made a post somewhere. He was involved in making of the Alien RPG, and he saw, he appreciated the very high quality, production quality of their book, and he said that was something that he wanted to be involved in in his stuff, and I'd say he definitely made it. This is, um, it, it's a wonderful it's a wonderful book. It's probably one of the nicest RPG books I have. And I've got more than I'd care to admit. I'm just going to just kind of flip through. I will be going over the setting. I'll be going over it in the PDF here shortly. But just to kind of give you an idea of what the book itself looks like. It has a, the game itself has a very uh, well thought out intro and settings that fit right into the theme that it's going for. This is something that was added in the revised edition was the some more information about drones and robots. Anyway, it's a uh, just just a very well produced book. Um, it's very very tough, and that that color that color really comes out in the books. You may not have been able to see it as well with my camera uh, sitting there on my bed with that wash glare, but uh, uh, so be it. Yeah, so that, that's the hardback book uh, through Lulu.com, and I'll, I'll put links for where, where you can get all this stuff uh, down there. It was was a little pricey. At the time I bought it, it if you use the, the code TREAT15, like TREAT15, it will it knocked off 15%. But anybody who's followed books knows that with all the stuff going on, 
you know, the production costs of everything have just gone through the roof. But if you Lulu 15 or Lulu 15, Lulu.com treat 15 worked for me. I just found it on the web page somewhere on, on out in the web somewhere. So now we're going to I'm going to take a look more at the 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 book itself. Okay, I'm, I'm going to open up the open the PDF, and there we go. One of the things that I certainly appreciate is the bookmarks on the side because some of the older some of the older game uh, books from the Sozer don't have. Uh, PDF friendly bookmarks, but this one, this one does. The game itself is is all everything's written up kind of like it's supposed to be a, a corporation training manual. Which, uh, having worked in one of the larger corporations in the known galaxy for over two decades now, I I appreciate that. Another thing I appreciate about the the way the corporations are described is that the the people in the corporation, one, they're not all idiots, uh, and that they're not just like nameless, faceless bad guys, and that there are things that the corporations accomplish to the good. However, keeping in mind that in the end, they will, um, you know, screw you over for a portion because this is hostile, right? This is a type of game where the a uh, corporate rep may accidentally leave an alien egg or something while you're sleeping to get you back <laughs> through quarantine. Um, and here's the here here's the basic the the I guess you might say the mission. Well, it says right there mission statement. Another corporate uh, buzzword there. It's a gritty near future role playing setting designed to be played with its own companion book called the Hostile Rules Handbook. At this time, that rules handbook is not out yet. So to play this game now, you have to have one of the uh, the the Cepheus Engine SRD. I think is free on Draft Through RPG, and then there's one that's a little bit more um, cleaned up, and you can also use it. I played it with Cepheus Light by Stella Gamma uh, Publishing. They do a bunch of Cepheus Engine things, sort of Cepheus. Now, they just recently came out with uh, version 2 of Cepheus Light, which they call Cepheus uh, Deluxe. But you, you, kind of, you need one of those things to play this game. Um, I like the way... Paul's rules have worked in other things he's made, so I'm, I'm kind of hoping to see what his rules handbook looks like. Um, it looks at the history of corporations, offward colonies, and starships in the near future in the American sector. Now, right now, there's three different sectors. There's the Japanese sector, the German sector, or the European sector, and the American sector. He's focused on the American sector, and there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. In the book, I'm not going to go flipping page by page, but we will go through and kind of hit the different sections. Okay, this is more what he's talking about—the hostile, um, that it is gritty, uh, grim. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not uh, Warhammer 40k, but you you might find or easily throw in something say more along the lines of event horizon uh, because hyperspace travel is not safe it drives people crazy if they if they stay in hyperspace so they have to go into one of the little sleeping tubes or else and sometimes weird things happen while they're going through space okay Now, this orientation section, it, it has a good information on um, you know, basically the timeline what, of what's going on. And what it's presenting, there's no sentient aliens that they have encountered yet. They're, they've encountered 
hostile alien life forms, certainly exomorphs, that cause them, they, they cause trouble, and that's what they do. Now, this does tie back to the Orbital 2100 setting, like I said, and in that setting, they have actually detected uh, like a, a small handful of intelligent signals, and in this setting, you might come across some ruins. So, as written, they have not run into anything uh, or they have not run into any living aliens, intelligent, sentient aliens. But that doesn't mean that they're not out there and that they're not upcoming. But their focus, the focus is more on trying to keep the the horror aspect of it, the the unknowable, the 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 creature that's going to kill you and attack, not turn it into a like a space war kind of situation. There's enough information here that you could easily do that, but that's just not how it's presented at this point. But there are scenarios that have like, you know, some mysterious si uh, signals and things like that. But like any good horror game, such things are best left in the shadows until the end. Anyway, the Earth itself is suffering from desertification, and you know things are things are bad, and a in a pretty good write up of what's going on, and then the rise of the corporations, and a list of I think there's seven. All right, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, these are like the the largest corporations, and it has the hostile has a good discussion of this is this is going back to more off-world development we'll get to the corporations in a little bit but it, it, it has a good discussion of how those corporations develop the things that they're doing and and really one of the things that I appreciate also about the corporation uh, write-up in this is that they are they're like our corporations but they really act uh, more like what a corporation would act like out in the you know out in the wild. Uh, you, you, I think the game draws a comparison to like mining corporation towns and in distant Alaska during the gold rushes, things like that. And it's not all just bad. It's not that they're all you know faceless bad guys, but the corporation knows that they have to take care of themselves. Yeah, they're they're out to make money, but the way the corporate life is described in the book it's uh, cl closer to uh, what, what I knew as kind of the Japanese culture in the uh, corporate culture in the 80s where everyone was very close where the people was where the people was where the people were close the workers were close and it was about the team uh, and so I think that's a it, it's a very interesting way to develop them that I think makes sense and not just because uh, Japan is kind of a rising power in this setting, but because you you can get away with things, a corporation can get away with things and still survive when it knows it has a you know a, a big government that it can kind of you know <laughs> dump its victims on or whatever. But out in space, when everyone's living in a planet with limited resources, you know things are a little different and I, I think they're the corporations are written up very well okay so this uh, this talks about the star mapping and the off-world development anyone who is familiar with traveler this this is all done pretty much like your uh, well I won't say, won't say standard but familiar um, fair your familiar um, Icons, you're familiar. It's got your universal you know, planetary profile, your UPPs, and it has a lot of them. It has a it has a lot of areas mapped out already, and it has the you know the the colonies where they're at, what hex number they're in. Uh, again, um, traveler traveler common type stuff, but it has a lot of them. Yeah, you can just see there's pages and pages of this stuff. Let's 
and there's some more pretty cool artwork. Okay, and here's where it's going. It goes through the world data uh, and just explains it and what it all means and the different types of transports. Now it is um, kind of a tweet for this setting, of course, you know, is, uh, it doesn't go into different high G or uh, high G, high tech level issues or anything like that. Everything is focused around the tech levels for the game itself. Okay, a lot of good background information. There's some more excellent work. And and another thing that's pretty cool is that the planets themselves are very are varied. I mean, there's a lot of cool different uh, backgrounds. You know, some of them they have to live in orbit and work down below and uh, you know, some of them, the, the planets, that, that's one thing that's kind of a constant is there's no real Earth-like planets as in like a garden, you know, a place where you can just go and be a Garden of Eden, all right? Most of the planets are very hostile, which, you know, of course, they're hostile. Okay, now here we have a good, uh, this is what I was talking about, the good discussion of the corporations and the organizations that came up around them like the uh, you know, mining you know, well, I don't want to I don't want to say it wrong but the there's the MRA and the ICO and these are organizations that the corporations have, have put together as uh, you know to kind of deal with things between them. And it talks about the big seven corporations, and then it's also its related businesses. And each one of these big corporations, they have a common structure because, like I said, they're their own government. They're their own entity uh, all around. They've got their own banks. They've got, you know, they, they basically are their own, uh, well, government, like, like I said. But there's a lot of detail. And some discussion about, uh, a lot of good discussion about other organizations in there. And there's that picture again, I like that. It talks about, like in this case, it, it, most, it just talks about the U.S. Space Command for the most part, but it, it gives like information about the nomenclature and things like that. Things that I used to have to know on some of my rating exams when I was in the Navy. But a lot of a lot of good organization. You know, there's the, the colonial marshals if you're looking for, you know, to run like an outland kind of thing. And here's some uh, some corporate logos, which is cool. It's cool to have those in there. It just makes them feel uh, more real. Action for Peace, and then there's, you know, some criminal organizations, and just a lot of information, a lot of groups, and how they interact and how they're related. Okay, now this is where we get on to the, um, when you're making characters, okay? If you're familiar with how to make the, the characters in Traveler, this is about the same it has it has its own little idiosyncrasies, but it's it's very familiar. Um, it talks about the types of characters that would be interesting to run or uh, whatever. And then there's androids talking about the character creation. You pick your home world skills if you're from the home world and and. Uh, some differences on how the social standing works because obviously there's there's not an imperial feudal system so it it goes back to running the uh, the more familiar more modern you know being celebrity being rich 
and there's its draft. Here's a list of the careers. I have many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen. Oh, well, I wouldn't spend all that time counting, but it says right there, fifteen career paths. So it's uh, uh, that's a good number, and these are all. Yeah, you know, it pretty much left out all the type of career paths that uh, you know, like there's no there's no athletes or entertainers barbarians because the barbarians they're not really part of the setting but everything else is pretty pretty common instead of instead of dying if you fail your survival roll you roll in this mishap table it can't, depending on your career and depending on what you roll, it can end up in you being injured instead of killed. And I guess, of course, if you really wanted to during character creation, if the, if the group and the GM wanted to, you could kill them off if they did it. It is hostile, after all. But that's mostly it's just your career is over at that point, and then it describes the mishap. Some of them are just good for role-playing ideas you know you, you pissed off some rival corporation that's somebody you can maybe bring in later on to fool with you uh, let's see yeah so pretty basic stuff if you're familiar with um, with traveler at all or Cepheus engine The equipment, again, goes back to what would be classified around tech level 9 or 10, uh, more familiar and uh, uh, near future. That's the word I was looking for. F familiar and near future uh, equipment. You know, you're not going to find anything that's, you know, wacky doodle. Uh, the one thing that... Uh, does come up different in from our near future and the setting of hostile some of the the tech is retro tech and that's mostly to keep to keep the theme of the 80s and 90s you know what they pictured the future would look at or look like uh, so instead of cell phones you've got you've got your video phone and so, you know, it looks more like Blade Runner. Um, now, when I'm playing on Earth in my campaign that I ran, I, I kind of had it more that there were cell phones and, and Wi-Fi and stuff. But on ships and on colony planets, I, I do keep it kind of retro tech one because, you know, some of that retro tech is a lot easier to build than the new tech. I, I'm, I'm a long time phone guy now and I know the type of infrastructure that you need to watch your YouTube videos on your on your phone right I know what that takes and if you're if you got a small colony there you know it's not quite as easy and when you're dealing with a hostile environment where you have maybe a, uh, a high level of EM interference or radiation belts things like that you know, that Wi-Fi stuff, the delicate things, they're not going to last as long. So I actually like the aesthetic, and that's that's how I view it, because I think in certain in certain ways that's really what it would look like, kind of that frontier slash uh, firefly effect, where in the core worlds, you know, they got all the fancy stuff, but out on the, out the rim, you know, out in the black, then they're having to work with, equipment designed to be more rugged okay. and just to kind of uh, we're getting about to that half hour mark so I don't want to I don't want to make it too long um, but everything you know if you're familiar with how the software works in Traveler I mean Traveler itself was 1970 right so it kind of it kind of has a retro, the old traveler has kind of a retro uh, idea to it as well. Um, 
medicine, you know, advanced but not super advanced. You know, they can regrow limbs and things like that. But if you get, you know, if you get eaten by uh, some kind of xenomorph, then that is pretty much curtains. Uh, they have a pretty good list of of weapons and uh, and gear space sci-fi gear and these uh the drops for the weapons are look pretty good too they have a a, a realistic a verisimilitudinous uh effect to them and they i'll, I'll go over some of this stuff real quick that they have but um zozer has put out some of these smaller booklets that uh, are that, that have some of this information as well. Okay. And here's some more information about uh, here's a, here's a section that has some it has some good information on how to run a type of campaign that fits a hostile setting. Okay. And like I said, the, the the people in a hostile Space is a working environment. It's not, uh, you know, except for maybe some very wealthy, it's not a place where people go to visit because there's a bunch of hot Star Trek chicks there in scanty clothes, right? If you're out there, you're working on some kind of rig. You're working, you're mining, you're, you're digging, you're fighting, whatever. It's not meant to be, uh, you know, it's not a... Uh, shiny sci-fi kind of place, but there's a there's a good discussion of those types of play. How to keep tension up when you're uh, running? How to a, a horror type thing? The different types of horror, um, and there's a discussion on like if you th there's a discussion on how if you want to run a military squad like a military RPG, U.S. US Marine Corps uh, campaign. Uh, talking about right here's a horror creating fear doing the uh, you know the alien on the spaceship kind of thing a lot of a lot of good jamming advice and then there's a starship construction also if you're familiar with Cepheus engine or uh, traveler if then you are then you'll 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 see you'll you'll be familiar with it anyway a lot of good information on the you know, on the on the setting just a lot of a lot of meat in this book now i went ahead and i uh i popped up the the drive through RPG just to kind of give you an idea. Um, like the hostile toolkits, that's a lot of the, uh, you'll see some of these are free. Right now they're marked down because it's like RPGs doing their, RPG drive throughs doing their independent sale or something. By the time you watch this, it's probably, that sale is probably going to be over. But it's free. The hostile toolkits, basically it has all the equipment in it, which does make it handy. I, I, I have all those things. Um, because it's handy to be able to just look up, you know, in that little section. But like the gun locker, introduction to hostile, that's that's a good one. If you're interested more and it's a pay what you want. Um, if you see this now, your hostile setting is down almost like almost half off. The technical manual, that's really good too. I, I'm kind of a I'm kind of a techie myself just because of my my background. Um, and it's the the technical manual and the 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 descriptions of the technology and the setting are all they're all very intelligent they're well written we see the situation reports these are just uh, they're basically hooks for adventures they're free the two die six retro rules you might see them referenced in there uh they're I still think you need some of the the basic the the Cepheus engine stuff to use those. Um, 
kind of thing. Zaibatsu is a it's like a cyberpunk. The rules are a little different in it. It's in the same setting, but it's meant to be like a cyberpunk thing in Tokyo. Uh, but it's useful. And so you can see all this stuff. Um, well, except for role-playing in Roman Britain, which is them. But it's not part of Hostile, so I'm not sure how that got done. Never mind. <laughs> My search. But all these these uh, things have just a lot of information. Dirt side is excellent. Um you see, I mean, there's just a, there's just a ton of, of information. Uh, Zozer Games has put out so much stuff um, that it's it's uh, it, it's it's amazing, which makes me it easier for me because well, I'm old now. I don't have a lot of time to write up as much stuff as I used to. Now this is from their. Uh, uh, I just open it up. It's right there. Um, no, Explorers. This is the Explorers PDF. This is taught. This is the um, focuses on how to run uh, campaigns centered around uh, exploring sites for development. Okay, but you can see there's uh, just a. Not a review of this one, but just to just to show how much how much content are are in these books that those are put out, and they they keep this this awesome you know corporate um, aesthetic up. You know these all look like you know sales pitches and sales ads. Okay. Anyway, that's a uh, went a little bit longer than I had planned on, but there's a lot of stuff in Hostile. It's probably my favorite sci-fi setting. Um, and my my two favorite sci-fi settings up until this have been the Traveler 2300 and Transhuman Space. Um, so, and th those are so it's a good it's a good pedigree. It's well written. The art is great, and the the setting is internally consistent and, and interesting. And you can do a lot with it. And there's a lot of books and a lot of just a lot of stuff. Paul really knows how to how to how to make these things interesting and high quality. And I will put all the I'll put the links to Drive Through RPG and to Lulu and all that stuff down there. Uh, so I hope the review was useful, and I hope that it will you know, get you to buy some hostile stuff, because uh, the more people buy, the more stuff I can buy when they decide it's worth making more. But it's an excellent system, or excellent setting. I really enjoy it, and I hope you enjoyed the review, and happy gaming. And don't walk down the dark corridors. Never walk down the dark corridors.